Hi, I'm Emily, a contributing blogger at SecondarySolutionsBlog.com, and today I want to talk about a couple uses of Google Drive, including sharing documents with students and allowing students to turn things into you online using Google Drive. There are so many possibilities for technology in the classroom, and I hope that you join us for more of these technology video blogs for teachers at SecondarySolutionsBlog.com. Alright, so you start by signing into your Google account and you click on the top panel here, you click on Google Drive and this is my teacher Google Drive. I'm going to have my teacher Google Drive open in Safari and then I have a student Google Drive open in Chrome that I'll show you in a second. So. I start by clicking on Drive and then you can see I have three folders right here. That way I make one for each class so that I can share just the documents for a particular class on the web page for my school that's for that particular class. That way students don't have to see everything just to find what they're looking for. So to add a new class or a new folder, you could click Create here or this little plus button here, either one. So I'm going to click it here, Create a Folder. And let's say I'm teaching English 10 CP also. I click Create and it'll show up here as one of my folders. Then within each folder you can also create subfolders so that your documents are really organized, um, which is nice when you're sharing with a lot of students. They want to see a lot of organized documents so they don't have to look too hard. So as you can see I have a folder for every unit that we're doing. And let's just say um, I want to add a new unit. So I'm going to click on this little down arrow for 11 CP. I'm going to cr click create new folder. And we can say that I am teaching um, an SAT prep part of my class. And I will create and share. And then now that is also um, on the list for students. Then within each folder, you can see that I can put different documents. So inside my Gatsby folder, I have some documents here. You can either create documents right on Google Drive by clicking Create and then creating a document, a presentation, a spreadsheet, a form, or a drawing, which the Google Drive Create is very similar to the interface for Microsoft Office Suite, so if students are comfortable with that, they'll probably be comfortable creating them on Google Drive. The other option is to say, take something that you've already created and just drag it in. So I've already created this document in Microsoft Word and I can just drag it into that folder. It's going to give me a warning to upload and share because I've already shared this folder with my students and so it wants to me to know that if you put this document inside here, you're also sharing it with everyone you've previously shared this folder with, which is fine. So I click Upload and Share, and it's there in a matter of seconds, and if students log on, they can see theirs. Um, so that's how you get your documents organized, and now let me show you how you share it with your students. And there are a couple things you want to make sure that you have in your settings so that your students can not edit your masters, if that's the, the way that you're using Google Drive to share master copies with students, you want to make sure they can't edit them. So, so I'm going to come back over to my 11CP folder, click the down arrow, and I'm going to click Share. And it's going to come up with a couple of settings. First, I want to make sure that who has access, anyone who has the link can view. The other option is anyone who has the link could edit. You probably don't want that if you're sharing master copies with students. You just want it to be on view. You can say it's anyone with the link. It could be public on the web or it could be private and then you have to invite people with their email addresses. Um, so you'll say okay. Um, you'll save that. The other thing you really want to make sure to do at the bottom here is only the owner can change the permissions. You want to make sure that you have that as the setting. The other option is to say that anyone can change the permissions and that's probably not what you want if you're sharing your masters with your students. 
Um, the other thing you can do is you can invite people down here with their email address and these people will be collaborators and you could decide if these people that you put their email address here can edit or also can just view. What I like to do is have students just be able to view but if you have a teacher a colleague that you're working closely with that you trust to edit and add things and change things as you go through the year, you could put their email address here and they'll be able to edit and people with the link like your students will only be able to view. Uh, but that's up to you. You want to, if you're inviting people, you can invite people. If you're not inviting people, you can just copy and paste this link here and then click done and it's been shared with uh, anyone who now has that link. So then I could go to my school's website paste that link onto my uh, website for my classes and the students can access it directly. So let me show you how a student would access it. I'm going to bring over, this is my student Google Drive that I'm signed into. It's a different account. And I would go to my school's website and I would click on that uh, link that my, my teacher posted on there and I'd paste it in the top and this is what it's going to look like. Here are all that teacher's documents that she shared using that link. And I have a couple options as a student. I could just click on them um, every time, go back to the link um, and look at things individually. If I click on it, I could save it to my Microsoft Word. I could save it to my drive. I could print it. Um, I could just read it online or I could add everything or certain things to my Google Drive and then as a student I will always have access to that on my Google Drive. So I'm gonna go back to the main folder and I'm just gonna add everything because I know that I'm gonna be in this teacher's class all year long. So I click up here, add to drive, and then I click open in drive and it's going to now be my drive, not my teacher's drive, but I have all of those um, I have all of those documents still that were that are owned by my teacher, but I have access to them. Another really fun thing that you can do with um, Google Drive is you can create a Dropbox for student to to turn things in. So I'm back to my teacher um, Google Drive, and I want to go to create a form. Let's see, I'm going to create it inside of the Gatsby form here. So I'm going to say create a form, create and share, and this form is going to be, let's say it is um, the 1920s research paper. And you can click any theme you want for it. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to click the default and say okay and I need to have a couple of questions when my students um, come to turn it in and actually I'm gonna say this is for period four um, I'd make a form a Dropbox for each class because the grades or the um, submissions are put all together and I'm I want to keep the grades separate for different classes it just makes my life easier so I'm gonna do make one form for each of my classes so the first question is going to be name. I need to know the students' names. It, that kind of question is a text question. I'm going to say that it's required and I'm going to say done. Uh, the next thing I want to add is I want to add um, something that makes the students acknowledge that they understand my plagiarism policy. I understand Mrs. Guthrie's plagiarism policy and you can even put a link to it if you want to that's up to you that's going to be a checkbox and it's going to um, I understand it's going to be a required question because that way they're kind of locked into that fact um, and then that's oh and then I'm gonna have to add one more I almost forgot to add the paper URL for research paper and that's going to be a text question also and it's required they have to do that so in order to submit the form properly they have to have all three of these 
that's why I clicked on those required items. So that is what I want to have for my form here. I don't want to show a link to submit another response. I just want to allow responders to edit responses after submitting. I do this because it always happens that students um, submit the wrong paper or whatever and then they need to go back and edit it and of course they're trying to email me at midnight and they're stressed out so I let them edit their own. They won't be able to see other people's and they also won't be able to um, edit anyone else's but they can edit their own. So then I'm going to click send form. And I have a couple options of how I'm going to send it to students. I could either uh, embed this somewhere. I could share it on Google+, Facebook, or Twitter. I could enter email addresses. Um, or I could just click Done, and it's automatically in that drive that I've already shared with students on my web page. And so I can just tell them it's there. And so now I have that all set up. I'm back to my student Google Drive and I want to create my research paper. Probably they're going to create it in Microsoft Word or on their hard drive and then drag it in here. But if they wanted to create it right on Google Drive, uh, they could do that also. So I'll click on Create Document. And you can decide how you want your students to name them if you, if you even have some kind of thing that you want. But... I'm going to say 1920s research paper EAG. I'll put my initials. And then what a great paper. We'll just pretend like I'm a student and I just wrote a great paper. Uh, you can see it has all the normal kind of boxes here. And then I'm going to click share. And I want to make sure that for this, anyone with the link can see it because I'm going to share the link with my teacher. And then I just click on this. I copy and paste it. I say I'm done. I go back to my Google Drive. And I go to my 11CP folder. I go to Gatsby. I go to the form 1920s research paper. And it's going to prompt me to fill out this form. So I'm going to say that my name is Emily Guthrie, I understand this is Guthrie's plagiarism policy, and then I copied that link earlier to my paper. Now I'm going to paste it, and I'm going to submit it. It's going to tell me that it's been recorded, and um, I can edit my response if I want to. Now I'll go back over to the teacher and show you how it looks. So you can see right here on the teacher's drive, I have 1920s research paper responses. It is not shared because I don't want my students to be able to see each other's work. Um, but I can click on it. And it's going to come up with a list of students who have turned it in. And it will build the list for your whole class together. That's why I do period four all together or whatever it is that you want to do. It'll tell you what time they turned it in. So if you have a particular deadline, it'll tell you whether they met it, their name, whether or not they understood your plagiarism policy, and the URL for their research paper, which you can click on, download, print, save, whatever you want. Um, you can also add more columns here, so if you wanted to add their grade or a note about it or anything like that, you can edit this chart and just save it um, as you go along. So those are two of the great options that you have with Google Drive in the classroom. You can share documents with students, so there's never that problem of, oh, I left that worksheet at home, or I was absent, or I wasn't sure. Um, where to find something. They're all in one place. And you can also have students turn things into you, which can help reduce the paper that's being used and also um, just create a more streamlined system for you. These are only just a couple of the things that you can do with Google Drive. And as the months go on, I hope we'll look at some more options for Google Drive and other technology in the classroom resources. For more information and for other teaching tips, visit us at secondarysolutionsblog.com. Thanks.